Now we want to turn our attention to solving equations that involve radicals. I've written solve, and I have t plus 5 equals square root t plus 7. Now what keeps me from being able to solve this by my normal methods is having the square root on the right side. To get rid of the square root on the right side, what I'm going to do is square both sides of the equation. When I do that, I have to be careful because that sometimes introduces extraneous solutions. That is, solutions to the equation that I end up with after I square both sides that are not really solutions to my original equation. But we'll see about that in a second. t plus 5 quantity squared is t squared plus 10t, don't forget that middle term, plus 25. The square root of the quantity t plus 7 squared is t plus 7. So you can see I have a quadratic equation right here. I want to put it in standard form, factor it, and then see what I get for solutions. So I have t squared. You all subtract t from both sides, plus 9t. Subtract 7 from both sides, and I end up with um, 18. That is, 25 plus negative 7 is 18. Um, is equal to 0. So I put my equation in standard form. I have 0 on this side, decreasing powers of the variable on this side. Now I'll factor it into t plus 6 times t plus 3 is equal to 0. t plus 6, let's see, 6t plus 3t is 9t, and 6 times 3 is 18. I set this factor equal to 0, and I get t is equal to negative 6. I set this factor equal to 0, and I get t is equal to negative 3. Now, I know that these two numbers right here are solutions to this equation and this equation, but what I have to be careful of is that they may or may not be solutions to my original equation, because these equations come from the original equation by squaring both sides, and sometimes that will introduce extraneous solutions. So we need to check both these solutions. So I'm going to check t equal negative 6 in my original equation. I'll have negative 6 plus 5 equals square root of negative 6 plus 7. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1, and then negative 6 plus 7 is 1, the square root of which is positive 1. These two are not equal to each other. That's a false statement, so this was an extraneous solution. Let's check t equal negative 3. Negative 3 plus 5, in my original equation, negative 3 plus 5 equals square root of negative 3 plus 7. And as you can see, this one is going to work. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Square root of negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Positive square root of 4 is 2. I get 2 equal 2. So this is a solution to my original equation. t equal negative 6 is not a solution to the original equation. It's an extraneous solution. It's a solution to this equation, but not to the equation that I started with. And the reason that, it's, the reason that I introduced this extraneous solution was because I squared both sides of the equation. Let's look at another one of these problems. Square root x plus 1 equal 1 minus square root 2x. Same problem here. I have these square roots, and that's what keeps me from solving this by normal methods. So what I'm going to do is square both sides of this equation and see if I can't get rid of these square roots. The square of the square root of x plus 1 is just x plus 1. Now when I square this side, though, I have two separate terms. So I square the first term, 1. I square the last term, that's going to be just 2x, and then I have to take twice the product of the two terms for my middle term. So minus 2 square root 2x. Remember when you square a binomial like this, it's the first term squared plus twice the product of the two terms plus the last term squared. So I have to have this middle term right here. So I still have a little bit, I still have a square root in this equation. I'm going to have to square both sides again. But first what I want to do is isolate this square root on one side. So I'm going to start by adding negative 2x to both sides. That gives me negative x over here. Add negative 1 to both sides. I'll get 0. And what's left is negative 2 square root 2x. Now I'll square both sides again. To get rid of this radical, square root, the square of negative x is x squared. Here I'll have 4 times the square of 2x, which is 2x. So I get x squared is equal to 8x. Now this is a quadratic equation, so I'm going to put it in standard form. x squared minus 8x equals 0. Factor out an x from each term. x times x minus 8 is equal to 0. Set these factors equal to 0. I get x equals 0 and x equals 8. 
Now, the question is, are these extraneous solutions or not? I have to check each one of them in the original equation. So square root of 0 plus 1, is that equal to 1 minus square root of 2 times 0? Square root 0 plus 1 is 1, the square root of which is 1. Here I have 1 minus square root of 2 times 0 is 0, the square root of which is still 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1. So this is a true statement, so that means there I have one solution. Let's try x equal 8 in the original equation. Square root of 8 plus 1 is equal to 1 minus square root 2 times 8. Okay, 8 plus 1 is 9, the square root of which is 3. And then 1 minus square root of 2 times 8. 2 times 8 is 16, the square root of which is 4. So I end up with 3 equal negative 3. That's not true, so 8 is an extraneous solution. So only one solution to this equation, and that is the number x equals 0.